Welcome to another Todd's Two Minute Tech Tip Tuesday. Brought to you by the National RV Training Academy. The largest hands-on RV training academy in America. Hey, before we get to the video, which I know this is the reason why you're here, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. That way you don't miss anything. Hit the subscribe button now. Thank you. Now, back to our Tech Tip Tuesday. Hey, on this episode, it's not gonna be two minutes, it's gonna be about 20 minutes. So here's what's going on. We're gonna answer the question, if we do have a uh, inverter or solar system set up, how many batteries do I need to run that air conditioner? It always seems to be the question. That's what we'll answer today. Now, this episode is brought to you by uh, Big Beard Batteries and the National RV Training Academy in conjunction with one another. I'm gonna spend some time on this, so rather than, uh, like I said, just rather than two minutes, about 20 minutes to go ahead and give you the setup. So there's often the question when it comes to people who are looking to go off grid, and that is, you know, they're putting in a system. Well, these systems cost quite a bit of money, and a lot of us, what it is, is we're just kind of confounded to how much money we have, but we also have our expectations, and for a lot of us, if we're gonna spend the money to do some type of solar system, what we wanna do is run that air conditioner. What we don't know uh, for a lot of us is, is how much this air conditioner actually pulls in relation to a battery. We know that uh, these are typically connected to a 20 amp breaker. That's all that we know. We know we're supposed to get lithium batteries. So let's go over this. How many batteries does it take to start and run an air conditioner, and then how big of your battery, how long can you run that air conditioner? So those, those are the points that we're gonna look at today. So over here, I do have our standard roof-mounted air conditioner. This is by Dometic. This is their uh, Brisk Air 2 model uh, that's sitting here. I have on the uh, behind me one of our module walls. So in our solar class and actually in the week one class, we just have a wall set up uh, with uh, Vitron products to actually you know, facilitate what you would need uh, if you're to buy just a standard, you know, system. So behind me, I do have a Vitron 3000 watt inverter, um, all the accoutrements for that, and one single Big Beard battery, so much like this right here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna attempt to run one air conditioner off of one Big Beard battery. By the way, one more thing I need to talk about, anytime we do solar, uh, using an inverter, if you have an air, a roof-mounted air conditioner, you definitely need some type of soft start. The soft start is gonna take away the inrush from that capacitor down there. And there's a video here uh, that we did on the soft starts just to give you some more information. So again, on the uh, wall here, just your standard setup along with solar that facilitates our solar panels. No solar's going on right now. I, I literally have one battery, one inverter, and I'm gonna run a few things. Now, it's 75 degrees in here, and I know uh, that this air conditioner is not gonna work very hard in here. Uh, the Freon in there is relatively cool, so I'm going to add a few things, and let's see what the battery can do. So let me uh, kind of go over this. This is typically, in the RV, our roof-mounted air conditioners. There's different sizes, but typically hooked up to a 20-amp breaker. That's at 120 volts. It's not gonna draw 20 amps all the time. Again, I have a video talking about the varying amperage that your air conditioner pulls depending on how hot it is outside and how long of, of a time that you're actually running it and it cycles. So right now there's gonna be very little load. Um, so what we're gonna do, like I said, is we're gonna facilitate and add a few other things to see what this battery can do. So before we get into that, let's go ahead and cover some things. Uh, in the RV, um, your RV isn't, doesn't come with this, nor is it come wired with that. So basically you have your roof-mounted air conditioners to a 120 volt distribution panel that's connected to your power cord and your shore cord. You know, if we're gonna look at what it takes to run something, there's a few things that we need to look at. First off, we'll look at the inverter. Now the inverter is gonna take that battery power whatever battery power we have and step it up to 120 volt needs. Most inverters are actually rated based on their wattage output. So you buy the inverter, or you get the inverter based on whatever you want to run. So let's go ahead and look at this. This is a 3000 watt inverter behind me. So that means it can run up to 3000 watts. Okay, so here we're gonna run an air conditioner. Now, a typical Dometic uh, air conditioner, they tell us roughly about 14 amps running um, average heat outside. Now, we're gonna add an amp for every 10 degrees it gets above 104 surface temperature or 94 surface temperature, so these things can get upwards of 17 amps. Well, at 14 amps running, we're looking at about 16, 1700 watts. 
The inverter, this particular one, can produce about 3,000 watts. So it's, it's big enough to run the air conditioner and maybe a few things inside this cool uh, facility, right? It's, not only is it cool, as in you look at it, it's really cool. I mean, it's in the 70s. Now again, your RV doesn't have any of that. It comes with an air conditioner, goes to a 120 volt system. This is if you were looking to upgrade. So again, just kind of going over what you, what you need to think about when you're looking at maybe upgrading to a solar system. So again, first consideration is the inverter. You want the inverter big enough or inverters, multiples, big enough to run whatever your desires are, okay? One of the biggest problems that we have is when people get into solar, because the cost, they'll buy a small inverter and they can't turn on the air conditioner. Okay, so can you really off-grid with that? Well, then now you have to travel based on temperature outside. You get inverters big enough and a big enough bank of batteries that you can run the air conditioner, and that's our goal today. Now let's look at the battery. The battery is the supply. So here we have the inverter. It's gonna draw the power from the battery. And typically, whenever you get your RV, what comes standard uh, from the manufacturers, you have a lead acid battery at 100 amp hours. Now, I will tell you, anytime you do a solar upgrade, you really don't wanna use lead acid batteries. Remember, those are deep cycle batteries and they don't perform very well. They're, they're not there for large loads. This is why we started looking at lithium. So your standard RV, when you purchase it, comes with a 100 amp hour battery and lead acid batteries, right? 100 amp hours, lead acid, not enough. I mean, it would take really about six of those just to even think about starting this, okay? And you're gonna make those batteries sprint. When you switch over to lithium, well, even though they're deep cycle batteries, they, they almost work like a starter battery. In other words, they can have a continuous amperage output large enough to run large items. Because this battery is 12 volts and I'm trying to turn it into 120 volts, I'm gonna draw about 10 times the amps. So just for a point in case, if this on average pulls about 100, uh, 14 amps, if I do the math, I'm gonna pull roughly 140 amps from this battery. So in this room, maybe a little bit less. So this is what we're going to do, is show you really how many batteries you have. So it depends on the brand you buy. Today, we're just looking at the Big Beard battery. Now, this is a 280 amp hour battery. Now, just to kind of juxtapose that to your standard lead acid battery or a 100 amp hour lithium battery, this is 2.8 times, 2.8 times uh, the capacity of your standard battery. So it's, it's almost three batteries in that same space. But the question is, even though it's got three batteries in that same space, can it handle the amp output? So that's what we're going to do. So I have everything set up. I do have to have a soft start. I'm over here using the, um, Peacemaker to go ahead and turn this on because I don't have a thermostat here. And this battery, um, which I have one right back here, is Bluetooth. So what we're going to do is I'm gonna monitor everything as we turn stuff on. So I'm gonna connect to the battery, which is kind of cool to be able to do that in most standard batteries that you buy out there. They don't give you that Bluetooth functionality to get in there and look at it. So I'm currently set up. And this lithium battery, even though it's running, it shows that it's on the inverter. We're not plugged into shore power or anything else. And I have one battery. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn on the fan first and then I'm gonna turn on the compressor. And let me tell you how the easy starts work, okay? They are in conjunction with the capacitor. So whenever you turn on the air conditioner, say at your thermostat, and your thermostat calls for the air conditioner to turn on, your fan's gonna turn on first. And then typically, five seconds or so, your compressor turns on. When you put in a soft start, we're going to extend that time to about 10 seconds because at the five second mark or whenever the thermostat decides to go ahead and send power over to our compressor, it's gonna go through here. It's gonna grab it and then it's going to read what it needs to to the compressor and then slowly send out the amperage. So you don't get that huge boom, you don't have that huge inrush and allows the system to run a lot quieter. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on. And the neat thing is, is we're gonna be showing you what's being pulled from the battery. Again, roughly 10 to one. So let me go ahead and turn on the fan and you'll see the fan, typically about two and a half, three amps, is gonna show up about 20 amps from the battery. Again, 12 volts to 120. So right now I've got 20 amps pulling out of that battery and that's about average for a lead acid battery, about half of what it can do. I'm now gonna turn on the compressor. Now remember, we gotta wait a little bit. 
We'll watch it here on the screen. We'll see what's happening from the battery. I'll go ahead and hit my selector over here. So right now I'm pulling about 120 amps. Now that would be a lot, actually more than your standard lithium battery, right? A standard lithium battery, 100 amp hour, is only gonna pull about 100 amps, that's what it can draw. So we're about half of where we could be. So what I wanna do is add just a little bit more load. Okay, so right now I've got one battery running the whole thing. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and add a load. I have a heat gun down here and I'm gonna put it on low and I'm gonna approach about 200 amps. And we'll see from the screen here, we're sitting at about 191 amps. Voltage is holding strong. I'm over 200 now. If you had a standard lithium battery, you need at least two to be able to do that. We're still just pulling that off of one battery. Now the question is, is for how long? Right now, if I were to keep both this load going, I've got about an hour and a half. So one battery can run the air conditioner and this heat gun in this cold temperature for about an hour and a half. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off because I know it gets kind of loud, but here we go. So as we see there, um, depending on the brand of battery you have, the size of the battery, um, here's something new. When it comes to lithium batteries, you need to look at their charge and discharge profiles. Now, typically when you buy your lead acid batteries, you just go up to the computer screen or whatever, you type in the vehicle you have, and then they give you the replacement. Group 21, group 24, group 27, group 31. That's all we know. When we switch over to lithium, we gotta look at the performance. We call that charge profiles. How long, you know, what's its continuous amperage uh, charge and what its continuous amperage discharge. Now, if I'm running that uh, air conditioner, that would be the discharge. This particular uh, system uh, right now that we have is a 200 amp uh, discharge. That means I can discharge 200 amps continuously until the battery dies. Again, based on the capacity being 280 amps, if I was pulling roughly around 200 amps uh, over here continuously, about an hour, almost, almost two hours. Uh, we'll, we don't want this to go 100%, so we'll say an hour and a half off of one battery. So when you're looking at upgrading, this is what you do. You say, well, I know the air conditioner can pull upwards of this, and here in an RV, there's gonna be other loads. You can't isolate it down to the air conditioner. So I added a couple other things. I got it up to a, a really high mark, which is about 200 amps. That one battery can get me an hour and a half. Two batteries, three hours. Four batteries, six hours, right? Now, that's where we start getting crazy, getting up to a certain amount. Now batteries, I will tell you, if you're looking at upgraded and going off grid, batteries are there for the nighttime when you have no sun and you can't run your generator. So if you really look at this, how many batteries? You know, you could start off with one, I would say two, you know, uh, but you can start off with one, logically it can run it. Uh, start off with two just because of, you know, what you want to do, okay, I can run the air conditioner for an hour, mm. but if I need to cool it down, give me three hours, okay, that's acceptable, okay? But if you're looking at going fully off grid, the consideration is, is how many batteries you need to get you through the night. Because most places, of course, can't run the generator at night, they have quiet hours, and of course, we don't have lunar panels. So um, we put it to the test uh, in this review, and um, uh, I'm actually quite pleased because I got over the 200, and we've actually ran this for, for about four or five minutes, totally fine. Um, I'm looking at the temperature, I'm looking at all my voltage drops. I mean, it was less than a half volt drop between the battery all the way over to the inverter. So, um, one, that says good connections, but two, the battery is not dying. So let's real quickly talk about how many panels. That seems to be the number two question, right? There used to be uh, an old adage to have one watt per amp hour if you had a lead acid battery. Guys, totally has changed with the lithium batteries. We're actually just confounded to the limit on our RV, the size of the roof. But solar panels, based on their wattage, are really no different than the battery. What do I mean by that? Well, if you can get enough solar panels to run your air conditioner throughout the day, then you're really not using your batteries. They're, they're kind of in you know ready mode to do some stuff because the solar panels are doing it. So again, let's look at this. If the air conditioner is gonna pull about 1400 watts, 
and you want to run the air conditioner during the day, then you need at least 1,400 watts on the roof. It'd be better to have way more because with that 1,400 watts, you're going to have a very short window of where you may be able to hit that. So again, I will tell you, um, per dollar, solar panels are really the cheapest thing next to batteries, right? You get enough batteries up to a certain point, put as many solar panels as you can. But again, how many do you put up? Two things, how much room do you have on your RV? And get as many as you can because over time, that will be the cheapest way to restore power here and to run stuff during the day when you're turning on maybe two air conditioners, right? You can use a mixture of the batteries and the solar panel, but you'd have to have a larger inverter, of course, or two inverters, okay? Now you have a mixture of both running two air conditioners. And if you want to see how many solar panels, we got a video right over here for that. So as I said, uh, this episode is brought to you by Big Beard Batteries. I'm actually the manufacturer of Big Beard Batteries. So if you go over to bigbeardbattery.com right now, uh, we'll actually even design a system for you. When I say we, I will definitely help out. So not only are we talking about battery upgrades, but if you want to go with the full system, I'll chat with you, trying to figure out what your needs are, what your vision is. We'll, we'll tailor put together a solar system just for you. And if you're looking for installers, I've got installers all across the United States that I actually would recommend to help put this together. And there's your tech tip. The RV industry needs thousands of RV technicians and inspectors, and now is the perfect time to do that. If you want to make more money or have more control over your time, Go ahead and click the link below, or if you just want to learn how to fix your own RV, got something for you there. Head over to rvtechcourse.com and get started today. You may have wondered what I was using to actually turn on and turn off the air conditioner. This is uh, the Peacemaker by Skill Above RV Testers. Now, why am I talking about this? One, if you're a technician and uh, you get called out to uh, a site, air conditioning problems, something like that, typically you have to jump up on the roof to find out what's going on. The great thing about this is I can actually diagnose uh, a lot of the problems that we have with an air conditioner, find out if it's the compressor that's locked up or find out if it's the fan or whatnot from the comfort on inside the RV. I don't have to get up on the roof. It's called the Peacemaker by Skill Above RV Testers, which happens to be an instructor here at the National RV Training Academy. A lot of questions are, okay, what all the different types of brands of um, air conditioners can it run? Well, pretty much right now, all of them. So they change the harnesses out depending on the brand of air conditioner that you have. So called the Peacemaker, it is a wonderful thing. Uh, it allows you to basically diagnose a lot quicker. So if you want to find out some more about that, go over to rvtesters.com and get yours today.